Hey, how are you doing? Scott here from scottsbasslessons.com. Hope you're well. If you haven't been to the website yet, make sure you do so straight after this lesson because there's literally hours and hours of video lessons completely for free for you to check out. And if you subscribe to the newsletter, you'll also get sent special content that is kept for my subscribers and isn't on YouTube. In today's lesson, I'm going to be talking and deconstructing a 16th note groove that's similar to you'll hear Jaco Pastorius used to play. When I was a kid, or oh, not a kid, you know, around 18 or 19 when I first started playing bass, I can, I can remember the first time I heard Jaco Pastorius and it literally blew me away. And it was the 16th note groove thing that I just, I'd never heard before. Up until that point, I'd heard people play bass sort of... This kind of thing. And then I heard him and it was... That kind of thing. There's a trick to it, and I'm going to talk about that today. But first of all, let's deconstruct this riff that I'm working on, and I'll take you through it bit by bit so you can play it and get it into your own plane. So, it's over an F dominant chord, and the notes of the F dominant chord are F, A, C, E flat, and F. But remember, these notes are all over the fretboard. And that's what we're going to use to build this, what I've used to build this groove from. The groove in its full speed is... And it's mainly constructed from the notes of the F dominant 7 chord, which are F, A, C, E flat and F. Now let me take you through it really slowly. So it starts on an F and we've got a... That's like the first phrase. When you're learning things like this riffs, it's really important to break the phrases into small bite-sized sections. Then you can, you know, you've got a chance of learning it, getting your fingers around what you're trying to play, and then you just add it bit by bit, and the picture gets bigger and bigger as you go. So the first bit again. That's F. Now this is interesting, sliding into the major third, then fifth. This note here is the 13th, this D here, of the F Mixolydian scale. And that F Mixolydian scale is just, this, it's basically the scale that fits over any dominant chord. So here we go. Now when it hits this F here, that it starts again. go up here. So these two sections, first section, second section, so that's F, slide again to the major third from the minor, A flat to A, C, D, C, and then right up there to the F. Now when you hit this F, that is the start of the next phrase, and this is a little bit tricky, this phrase, so keep an eye out. Here we go. So it's B, D, D, B, D, D. Now remember, here's the F dominant seven here. So we're going root, root, flat seven, <coughs> 13, and then I'm stretching with my little finger. <coughs> down to the sharp five and slide into the fifth. And then I'm hitting the fourth or the eleventh, which is the B flat, B flat, G, 
and then stretching over here to the A flat and then sliding into the major third of the F. So in its entirety, this is what it sounds like. Slower. Just loop it round like that. Once more. So right up to that point we've got and then I kind of go down from the F to the E to the E flat which is the flat 7 of the F dominant 7 chord. And again. Actually, that bit there, I'm not hitting that E. I'm just going from the F straight to the E flat there. I'm not hitting that E. So once more. I did a kind of pull off there, but it's just a passing note to that E flat. Now the next part of the riff is exactly the same. Starts the same. And then I'm doing, I've heard these called stings before. I'm kind of rolling back and forward between the seventh and eighth fret. Eighth fret. So F, F, E flat. And then that, well, when you're doing that, you've got to make sure that you're not gripping the neck too much because you're not going to be able to wiggle between these two frets. Just to show you, I can actually move my thumb and do it just there. So there you can see my thumb. I'm not even relying on my thumb to hold on to that fingerboard. So. And then we've got a <coughs> which is again chromatic slide you hear this all the time chromatic slide into the third of the f7 and then hitting that flat seven which is the e flat and then i'm just moving it down a semitone and playing now you'll hear this all the time guitar players play this all the time imagine the groove was They play that all the time, right? All it is, is it's the, oops, it's the 13th of the F7 to the minor third of the, well, it's, it's not of the F dominant 7 chord because it's not in that chord. But what they're doing is they're superimposing the blues scale on top of that dominant chord. And you can do this all the time. If you've got a dominant chord, you can superimpose a minor pentatonic scale on top of that to get that bluesy sound. So the second part of the riff in its entirety. Again. Now at speed. Now, I am adding ghost notes in when I'm playing it, and that's what gives it that 16th note quality. And this is basically, these two fingers are going pretty much all the time. They're doing this. <clears throat> all the time. And that means you get. But you need to keep that going through the entire riff. They, do, they don't go all the time, but generally I would say 90% of the time they're just going back and forward. And when they're not playing, I'm dampening the strings with this hand. They're, they're kind of covering the... I'm, I'm not taking the hand off the frets, off the strings. I'm kind of just laying it on. Hear it? 
That's a great exercise. Just hold the F. So let's apply that to the groove really slowly. Now I'm going to play up to speed along with the backing track. If you want to download this backing track, the link is right below this video if you're watching on Scott's Bass Lessons, but if you watch it on YouTube, just hit the link below the video, it'll take you through to a page and you'll be able to download it from there. So let's hear this riff full speed with the backing track. One, two, five, two, three, four. <laughs> So there you can see when you're playing the ghost notes it kind of adds a real rhythmic quality to the riff without it it simply would be that kind of thing but with the ghost notes gives it that kind of driving train kind of thing and that's when I first heard Jaco Pastorius so I was just like whoa I've got to get that into my playing it took me a while to get it in there so don't worry when you first try and get these ghost notes in your playing don't worry if it takes a little while longer than you think because it really does you know take a little bit of practice to get it ingrained in there also something that might help you when you're doing this is just thinking about your tone a little bit um, it, I put my um, the jazz bass. I've just got the bit of the bridge pickup on here. I haven't got the net pickup on at all, and I've got the tone rolled all the way off. And that's so I'm getting that kind of barky sound. That it's a lot tighter than sort of like this. If I open everything up, it is. doesn't sound quite the same as. For me, that's more Jacko-esque. He played a fretless pretty much 99.9% .9 of the time anyway, and that has quite a barky sound to it anyway. If you've enjoyed this lesson, do me a massive favour and click that like button underneath this video. And other than that, take it easy. I'll see you soon and get in the shed. Mm -hmm.